When we talk about vectors, we can specify the vectors in one of three ways. So this is how the information is going to come to you. The most common way you think about that when you first learn about what a vector is, is that you say a vector is something that has magnitude and direction. You get a little bit farther in and you say a vector is something that looks like 3i plus 4j, where you've been given the vector in Cartesian form. You can also say a vector is something that's a magnitude along a line. So if I wanted to give you directions to go from here to Durham, I might say go 37 miles along I-40, or whatever that would be. This would be an example of a vector, which is a magnitude along a line. We can work with vectors in any of these forms. So you will see that we can add two vectors that are already in magnitude and direction by using the triangle law or the, the parallelogram law. You can add vectors in Cartesian form once they're already there by adding the i's and adding the j's. Generally what we're going to do with magnitude along a line is move it into one of these other two ways to be able to work with vectors. Most commonly what you will find is that you'll be given some scatter shot. There may be some of these and some of those and you need to get them all into a single format so that you can actually work with the vectors together. That's a lot of what we do is adding vectors. So I want to look at magnitude along a line for a minute. To do that, I want to start by defining the notion of a position vector. A position vector is like that example I gave you. I'm going to go 10 miles north and 5 miles west. Something along that line, so I'm saying go in this direction for a certain distance. It's a path from here to there. That's what a position vector is. So if we look at my boat here, this, that red line is the forestay. The forestay is a big cable that ties the mast onto the front of the boat. So if you look at this particular forestay, it's going from the top of the mast to the front of the boat. So it's going, if you just think about this in regular English terms, the forestay goes 24 feet down and 7 feet left. If I use the i and j that I have from Cartesian coordinate form, where these are along the y-axis and along the x-axis, which are defined for you x and y like normal, then I could say that the position vector is minus 24j minus 7i in feet. This is a picture of what that vector would look like on a Cartesian plane without its boat. The units here are going to be in units of length, because I'm saying go this many feet in these directions. So that's a position vector. A unit vector is, by definition, a vector that has length 1. It's pure direction. It doesn't have any units at all. So I would be, you're familiar with sort of i, j, and k. These are unit vectors along the axes. i is the unit vector along the x-axis. j is the unit vector along the y-axis, and so forth. Right, up, north, left, these are all examples of unit vectors. They're just directions. The four state that we had a minute ago in the, the position vector was not a unit vector. Sometimes it is. If you're only going to go one foot, then that would also be a unit vector. It would also have length one, but it would also have units. So the unit vector here, I need to get rid of the units and I need to make it have length one. So right now, it has length, by the Pythagorean theorem, it has length 25. That's how long my force day actually is on the boat. That's not equal to 1. But I can normalize this. I can divide it by its own magnitude. That's what this means. Take the position vector and divide it by its own magnitude. Now the magnitude will also have units of feet. So your feet are going to cancel. And I'll have minus 24 25ths j minus 7 25ths i. That's a unit vector. And if you plug that into the, the Pythagorean theorem, you're going to see that it has length 1. So this is a place where you have a unit vector. Now, tying these all things together with what I said at the very beginning, a lot of times what we want to do is change magnitude along line into Cartesian form. So if we're looking at this, you'll hear me say this a lot, position vector, unit vector, multiply. That is the method for using, for changing magnitude along the line into Cartesian form. So this is my position vector. That's the force state that goes from here to there. This is the unit vector. This is divided by its magnitude. So you have a unit. This is pure direction. Now, if I tell you that the tension in that force state is 800 pounds, I want to know what the force vector is. 
the force vector needs to have units of force. So often what you will have to do is find that tension in Cartesian form. So this is the where you're going. This is the pure direction. This is the, the position of the force day. This is the pure direction of the force day. And this is multiply it by now its magnitude. So a force is a magnitude of direction. Here's the magnitude. Here's the direction. If you multiply that, this is this vector is given to you in magnitude along a line, 800 pounds along the force day. This vector is the same vector. It's now in Cartesian form, minus 7668J minus 224I in pounds. These now have units of force. So anytime you are given something that looks like this, a physical object with a magnitude, and you need to move it into Cartesian form so that you can work with it with other vectors, position vector, unit vector, multiply. That's what you need to do.